Welcome to One Mind Zen Hermitage. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unsan Chita. Greetings, great bodhisattvas. To put tonight's talk into a little bit of perspective, uh, today is November the 4th, 2020, and it is 2020 election day plus one as of the moment when I'm giving this talk right now. Uh, so far as I'm aware, no one has been decided upon as to who the uh, next U.S. president is going to be. Given the level of acrimony that uh, has been pervasive for quite a while now and seems to have come to a head uh, in the run-up to the election, it seemed like we Zen practitioners could probably stand to be reminded of uh, a thing or two uh, about how to keep on the great way. The Bodhisattva isn't interested in creating samsara light. We're in the business of assisting all beings to liberation. And once all beings have been liberated, then okay, we'll, we'll join in the liberated club. But until then, we're here to hold the door open as it were. Anyone tells you that uh, the goal is to create samsara light, they're mistaken. We're not trying to make a slightly less sucky said samsara. The ultimate place we want to be is liberated. The ultimate state we want to be in is liberated. There are a lot of people that think that um, simply by following the uh, Four Noble Truths, including the Eightfold Path, that's all you need to do, and uh, poof, bang, zoom, liberated. And in a very individualist framework, that may be the case. But as Zen practitioners, the Mahayana school is more concerned with the liberation of all beings, not just one and done, as it were. Difference between um, the Eightfold Path and Four Noble Truths and the Mahayana Path is the difference between I and we. Now, if you ask almost anybody what the Buddha's foundational superior teachings were, they would probably say the Four Noble Truths and uh, Eightfold Path. I, on the other hand, think that that's all nice that described the condition very well and it described things we can do uh, to help alleviate the condition. But from a Mahayana perspective, in order to alleviate the suffering, the samsara, there are other things we can do too. And they are called the four immeasurables. 
And if you are not familiar with them, uh, I will tell you what they are, because that's the kind of guy I am. Uh, loving kindness, or in Sanskrit, metri, uh, compassion, uh, karuna, sympathetic joy, mudita, and equanimity, uh, upeksha, are the, uh, the four Brahma Viharas. And like I said, there is a heavier emphasis on we in them. You can't practice the four immeasurables alone. So loving kindness for starters. Uh, seems to have been in a somewhat uh, deficit position lately. There hasn't been a lot of it going around. Um, how do we exhibit this mind of loving kindness? Well, there is a Sutra in the Pali Canon, that's often known as the Metta Sutta. And uh, here is a little excerpt from it. In gladness and safety, may all beings be at ease. Whatever living beings there may be, whether they are weak or strong, omitting none, the greater the mighty, the medium, short or small, the seen and the unseen, those living near and far away, those born and to be born, may all beings be at ease. Even as a mother protects with her life her only child, her only child, so with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings, radiating kindness over the entire world. So, if we want to pursue the Mahayana path, we've got to radiate kindness to the entire world. It's not easy. We have to realize that the trials, tribulations, discomforts that others feel affect the way they behave and they may not be so inclined towards exhibiting loving kindness all the time to us but that's not any reason for us to not bother at least trying to uh, radiate loving kindness loving kindness is is aspirational right it's may all beings be happy it's a prayer if you will if you like if you want to remove the abrahamic religion baggage that the word prayer often has attached to it but it's aspirational i want you to be happy i want you to be at ease when it comes to adding compassion into the mix is where we put that into an active state. Compassion, I know this is grammatically incorrect, but compassion could be thought of as the verb associated with loving kindness. We see a difficulty in someone else and we do what we can to alleviate it. If they're hurting, we try and soothe them. We try and calm them. Uh, if someone is hungry, we maybe donate to a food bank, or maybe we work at a soup kitchen, or maybe we even make a sandwich for somebody and give it to them. That's compassion. It's an action. It's not a passive thing. Let's say someone experiences something that is wonderful. Some being 
has become happy and has had the causes of happiness. Maybe it's because of something that we did in an act of compassion. Maybe not. But someone is experiencing joy. Sympathetic joy or mudita is where we take joy in someone else's joy. And the thing is, Mudita doesn't need me to be involved in any way other than being sympathetically joyous. The person who's joyous doesn't need to know I'm joyous for them. I don't necessarily have to be involved in causing their joy. Um, their joy, no way, shape, or form needs me to validate it. It's me being happy that they're happy. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, the less they know about my being happy, about their being happy, the better it is. Here's, here's where it gets tricky, the big tricky, as if loving kindness and compassion wasn't going to be tricky enough, as if being sympathetically joyous for someone who's experiencing joy that we hate. Equanimity. Equanimity, that state of being blown about by the winds of change and fate and just sort of bending to them. Being the rock in the water in a river where it flows on one side, the river flows on the other side, it turns into ice during the winter, freezes over, whatever might happen, it's just going to continue happening and we exhibit uh, imperturbability about it. So when someone else experiences perhaps what they think of as joy, and like I said, it's not a joy that we really share as far as what it is that's making them joyous. Can we exhibit this equanimity, this imperturbability? If I hear, I don't know, if I hear gunshots going off behind me, which is entirely a realistic thing, depending on whether somebody is happy that someone won or whether someone is unhappy that someone won, can I maintain a state of equanimity? Can I accept that that's what's happening? Equanimity, however, doesn't mean that it's a passive acceptance, right? The rock in the river is one thing. We're not rocks in rivers. We try and maintain that wu wei, kind of let everything flow around us, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to do it passively as sentient beings. Reality is reality. Let's face it, it just is. We have to accept reality. That's one of the major points in our practice is to see reality for what it is. But 
reality doesn't need to maintain that status forever. The level of acrimony that exists in the US these days is reality. And you can say, yeah, it's impermanent, it's subject to uh, shunyata, emptiness, it'll change. And yes, it will change, but we don't necessarily have to sit and passively let it take its own time when there is a situation that may come up where we need to exhibit some compassion towards someone, where we need to express loving kindness, where we need to create a situation where they can experience joy so that we can join them in their joy, whether they know we had anything to do it or not. We accept, but we don't have to settle. If we see an injury taking place, yes, that's reality. A compassionate person would do something to see that that injury at least stops if, it, uh, if not prevented from starting. There's a, uh, a slogan, we'll just put it as a slogan. We won't say where it came from or anything, but uh, it's an injury to one is an injury to all. And if we're going to take that seriously and we want to create uh, the scenario where someone can be at ease to have their suffering ameliorated uh, to contemplate their own interconnectedness with everyone else so that maybe the injury doesn't happen. Maybe it's stopped just short of taking place. In our practice, we try and at the very least encourage that sort of behavior in ourselves and others. And whatever it is, Whatever it takes for us to realize the interconnectedness between ourselves and all the other sentient beings, including the guys that voted for the other guy, the sooner we'll be able to help ferry all sentient beings to liberation. And that, my friends, is immeasurable.